Morrerei a com armas de guerra na mão. Já nada será meu caixão. Enterro será na patrulha. As the research curatorial team, we share insights into the layers of narration negotiated and their relation to the visual discourses and microtextuality of the films. The artist, curator and researcher are African, engaged in various research practices which pose questions about ethical, political, historic responsibility in representation. Acts of narration, interpretation and research were approached by artists and academic in direct conversation, generating academic life histories, a transcript from an existing project shared with permission, a story written by academic for the project, a response to an academic paper. In the films, tensions with authority are visualized through colonial structures of knowledge and belief. The academic appears as a spectre, words, utterance, song. Off camera, but in camera, they testify through the artworks in absentia. In the abyssal thinking of modern Western thought, much is obscured. Veiling also evokes the cultural and religious. The artist of Mgwali asks, the authoring of knowledge, what informs it? Whose history counts? We can't just say we're going to do away, decolonize curriculum. There needs to be a form of a cleansing. Axes of power carry across invisible lines of colonialism, the Cold War conflict, bringing with them displacement, diaspora, migration and exile. The windows is a means of framing, of escape, reflection, Multiple framings, viewing, subvert ideas of single truth or perspective, alluding to doubting, split selves. Parallel narratives run alongside one another, laying ancestral, contemporary future. At various moments within the films, there is a return of the gaze, the individual or collective agency of academics. The Syrian academic whose story contributed to this work asked, We as academics, what makes us stay during these horrible conditions? The answer is the deep belief that we might contribute to humanity and knowledge is power. Because if you're a scholar and you're producing scholars, then this is the heritage past for better generations to come. But we are of course frustrated because many institutions are turning hegemonic. Situated within the university, such academic responsibility for the generation of knowledge is visualized against the technologies of archiving, reproduction, erasure, classification, projection, and the colonial discourses of film. An academic explained, the way history is written in a country, it's the version that people who dominate write. The dominator do not get a voice of their own. I think as academics, we have that responsibility. Knowledge is visualized through the book, the word and language. This is not reverent, but a relationship to the book, which is complicated. First person movement across margins and demarcations. The agency of academic authorship in our walk where I like is further asserted in the title, a reworking of I Write What I Like, the title of the influential book by the black consciousness leader, Steve Beaker. When asked why he contributed to this project, the academic shared, it's one of the ways to shed some light or to expose, reveal, make obvious, bring to the center narratives that would otherwise never, never see the light of day in academic corridors or intellectual discourses or academic conversations. So it's the centering of the ignored. I think people who are elitist are quite bankrupt in terms of their understanding of the world. A viewer responded, I was amazed to see the use of the words, I had my fire. Somewhere I believe, being a first generation learner, that yes, the power comes from a different space, our own fire to resist. Resistance is one of the strongest counter narratives. The academic in India asserted, we have a proud heritage and a tradition and globally for people like us, I'm talking about having a richer tradition of resistance. It takes a lot of courage to stay. I'm teaching Yo in this institute and then speaking against it and going public about it. But I think somebody has to do it. Hopefully I'll not be victimized for saying what I'm doing. 
It does not matter. I need to register my protest. The artist of an irreversible other wrote that social discrimination in all its forms is a universal blight. The particular type, casteism, described in our informant story, is however specific to India. The film attempts to encompass both poles, the specificity and the universality. Fortunately, South Africa shares some environmental and cultural roots with India, as well as, unfortunately, some social historical scars that enabled a workable aesthetic hybridity. Savage. Backward. On his choice of this final rise in view to the horizon, juxtaposed with this discriminatory text, the artist explained, it's not a provocation because it's like the truth, the absolute truth. It's his truth and it's the truth of his context. In an earlier interview, the black academic from South Africa shared how he felt positioned. You're basically a messenger boy or messenger girl. You basically get reduced into a functionary. That's all you are. You lose. You lose voice. You lose academic identity. You just become... No, I don't want that. This is why this opportunity is allowing me space to feel my influence and what role those people should actually be playing. Positioning is central to Out of Order. Performing the roles of artist, research, participant and academic, we are presented with the pretense of ordering, organising and representing the self in academic rituals. In a cynical parade of identity politics, the artist staggers her narrative with that of the academic, speaking back to the academy, the project itself and the viewers. Conflict and trauma intersect with various injustices. Reflecting on how to represent such complexity, this artist expressed that she is not a victim, although she has been through so much. I mean, I don't think she sees herself as a victim, although she is. She's victorious, and I suppose that is the key to the story. But there is this melancholia in the narrative that you can't escape. It's not something that can be washed away, explained away. It is what it is. Representation that avoids pity and reifications into easy categories of identities was important for the artists of Untitled who focus on the structure of the story to avoid getting caught in the emotion of the trauma. The story is carried in the body, a body frozen and arrested, a body impacted, struggling, writhing, contorting. With very little context revealed, the sound drives the pathos, as does the cyclic cinematic ritual, repetitions alluding to multiple mnemic images, cultural practices, representations of the black woman's body, freeze frames of violence in Western film, forensic analysis scanned and studied, against the same body, enigmatic, dynamic, untethered, to reorient or avert the gaze a little bit. The academic described, my experience as a mother, my experience as a human being in war, my experience as an academic and what happened to the university during war. I don't get into being one category at the expense of the other. For example, dreams. What does it mean to be happy? I should be happy as a woman. I should be happy as an academic. It's so confusing. I should be happy as a human being. Hope for generations to come in motifs, images and sounds is a call to order, calling the ancestors, calling us to take heed. At the liminal point between two realms of knowledge and being stands the elder beneath a bell ringing without the intervention of a human hand. The artist wished this work to ask us, what does it mean to witness, to witness history and to revisit history? To allow a platform for people to re-remember, to memorialize that which could be one way or the other silenced or overlooked collectively. We end with this academic's reflections of the project. It really summarized the whole historic moments of my life. I told him the story of the bell. It is a bell. I was a ringer. This video has that message of ringing a bell. Let's just wake up. For maybe it's time for us to listen to different ways of talking about our lives. It's a question mark on leadership. I try to project that there is a failure in that vision because what is becoming a leader or a future revolutionary? And that's another thing, revolution. We're talking about socialism, communist ideas. Did they really die? Are they disappeared? Are they still valid in the sense of we're all looking at social change in the world? We're all talking about community development. Are they not rounded in the same values? I mean, sometimes... We build a world in so divisive ways that I don't see a division. Granada, Granada, Sera Mikasha. Intero, Intero, Sera Nasatu.